Hello, welcome back to the channel and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings and we generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general and in this video we're going to be talking about a classic Ameritrash game. We're going to be talking about Arkham Horror 2nd Edition and in this game you'll be wandering around the city of Arkham, you'll be gathering clues, you'll be gathering items that will boost your chances of defeating the old one at the end of the game. So in this video we're going to be giving you a very very brief overview of this quite rules fiddly game. We'll be telling you what we do like, we don't like. We'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not Arkham Horror 2nd Edition is still worth playing. I can't remember what it was coming, is it 2005? We'll say 17 years after it was first released in, I don't know, 2005. So remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below, will you? Hit the like button and all that YouTube bullshit. We'll see you after this. <laughs> So, Arkham Horror 2nd Edition, how do you play this game? So Arkham Horror 2nd Edition is an Ameritrash game which is highly dependent on the roll of a dice. There's a mechanism in this game called skill checks and you'll be rolling a certain amount of dice dependent on the skill that you're using. And if you roll a 5 or a 6, it's considered a success. There's also modifiers that will enhance your chances or will decrease your chances of getting those coveted successes. So each player is going to pick an investigator. There's quite a few investigators in the core set. You might want to pick Carolyn Fern, she is the psychologist. She's got a six sanity, which is the stat. If it's depleted down to zero, will send you off your nut. And she's got four stamina, which represents how much damage she can take. Each character's got a special ability. In the case of Karen and Fern, she's got the psychology ability. And it says in the upkeep phase, Dr. Fern may restore one sanity to herself or another character in her location, right? Or you might want to pick the twat in the hat, Dexter Drake. He is a magician. He's got five sanity, five stamina, and he's got a magical gift that he wants to give you. And it says in any phase, whenever the great drake draws one or more cards from the spell deck he draws one extra card and discards the other so this geezer is a bit of a magician clearly he benefits from drawing cards from the spell deck right or you might want to give a lift to ash can pete he's a drifter he's got four sanity six stamina not only does he draw universal credit but when pete draws from the common item unique item or spell deck he may draw from either the top or the bottom of that deck so there is a wealth of characters in the core set alone and it gives you a lot of variety when you are playing this game right so you'll notice that on your character sheet there's also these like slidery things and there's six different skills that you have got in the first phase of the game in the upkeep phase you look at your focus score and this tells you that the amount of spaces you can move each one of these sliders up or down so the skills of the characters they're not static they are dynamic so setting the game up is quite simple you'll stick all the cards out onto the table you stick the board on the table you stick some starting clues on the board you will open one gate you put a token on a location and a monster will appear and this will start off the cascading level of doom that you are going to face so like we said the first phase of the game is the upkeep phase this is where you refresh any cards that you tapped and you'll be able to use your focus to move your sliders up and down and then you'll go into the movement phase each character has a speed score be able to move one space for each speed point that you've got all the investigators will do this first before you move on to the next phase which is encounter phase so this is where it gets a little bit fiddly there's a few little things you've got to remember right so each investigator is going to have an encounter on the space that they land right if there's no gate on the space that you land you will draw a card from the location deck and you'll look at where you are and then you'll read and resolve the encounter that's on the card right if you're on a spot where there's a gate you'll be sucked into another world you move your investigator into the other world space you resolve an other world encounter you'll draw a card from the other world deck and you'll do what it says based on the place where you are when you're in the other world on your next turn you have to follow the arrow on the other world space and you'll move to the next space and then on the subsequent turn after that if you resolve the encounter correctly you'll be able to go back to the space in Arkham and you'll be able to put an explored marker on it and this will allow you to close the gate you have to do a skill check to do this and if you close the gate you'll take the gate marker as a trophy and these can be used for different things later on in the game right so there's also a way to seal different gates you'll be able to spend five clue tokens to stick an elder sign on it and this means that no more monsters can come through that gate right they ain't going to come through a bit like locking yourself in a downstairs bog so once all the characters have had their encounter you'll move into the 
Mythos phase, you will draw a Mythos card and you will resolve it. First thing you'll do is you'll add a Doom token to the Doom Track. If the Doom Track ever gets filled up, then the old one will awaken and they will probably kill you. Then you'll draw a random gate, you'll stick it on the board in the space that it tells you to. You'll draw a monster from the Monster Cup and you'll stick it on that spot. If there's an open gate at a location, then there's going to be a monster surge and this is where you're literally going to shit your pants, yeah? You'll stick a clue token on the board in the space that it tells you to. Remember, if you get five of these, you can close a gate and you can also spend clue tokens to re-roll dice that you fucked up. Then you'll move monsters. You'll look at the boxes on the cards and depending on the symbol on the monster, you'll be able to move them following the black arrow or the white arrow. Then you'll activate the mythos ability. This could be either good or it could be really bad. So if you're on a space of a monster, you get the opportunity to evade it. You'll have to do a sneak skill check and you will move away from the monster. But if you don't want to evade the monster or you bugger it up, then you can fight the monster. First thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do a horror check. If you pass it, nothing happens. But if you fail it, then you'll lose sanity equal to what's on the monster tile. Yeah. And then what you do, you'll look at your fight ability. You'll be able to add some weapons or skills to this to boost your score. And then you'll roll a number of dice equal to that. And you'll need to get a certain number of successes equal to the monster's toughness. If you pass, then you'll take the monster token as a trophy. But if you fail, then you're going to get fucked up royally. Right. So there's also a terror track. This will be increased through various things. If it gets to the third level, then the general store will close. Then the curiosity shop will close at level six and at level nine, then the magic shop. So if you really, really want the Ark of Dildo, you better run down a shop quick, right? You'll keep doing this until the ancient one awakens. There's a couple of ways for the ancient one to awaken. If the doom track is full up, then they will get out of their bed. If there's too many gates open, then the old one will come downstairs and give you slap. If there's no gate markers left of the board, then the ancient one will awaken. And if there's no monsters left, then you're probably also going to die. But the chances of that happening is probably slim to none. So what you do, you have a final battle. You'll look at the ancient one card and you'll follow the instructions. If you do over the ancient one, you win the game. If you don't, then you won't, right? So what do we like about Arkham Horror 2nd Edition? So the first thing that we really like about this is it tells a pretty bloody good story. Okay, it is random and disjointed. Sometimes you're looking at the encounter cards thinking, what the fuck is it talking about? How did I get here? But that's part of the game. You've just got to accept that stupid shit is going to happen. It sort of reminds us of the tales of the Arabian Nights where it's just haphazard, chaotic, anything can happen. But you know that going in, right? It's not like you're going to go into a haunted house expecting to see Zippy and Bungle in there. Well, maybe you are, actually. And whilst there isn't that that many encounter cards for the actual locations you have got quite a big stack of these other world encounters so just to give you a little taste of what you can expect to find in the other worlds you might find the city of the great race it says this conical entity tries to teach you some magic pass a law check to draw two spells that's quite good right or you might end up going to the plateau of leng it says you're taken to a prehistoric monastery where a high priest in a yellow silken mask questions you pass a law check to answer him to his satisfaction you'll gain your freedom it's nice of him isn't it and one spell otherwise you're lost in time and space which is probably a little bit scary isn't it or you might want to go to the abyss and it says the caverns split make a luck check and consult the chart below if you get one success you'll move to the black cave if you get two successes you'll move to the dreamland and if you get three you'll enter a dark temple pass a luck check to draw a unique cotton card so these location encounters are good or bad you never know what you're going to get it might be a little bit too random for some but fuck it we like it so the next thing that we like about this game is there is a good variety of monsters characters and ancient ones just in the core set i mean for instance like the amount of characters you get you get one two four, five six seven eight ten there's 12 characters in this game like i said at the beginning they've all got different special abilities they've all got different stats so this is going to keep you going for quite a long time likewise there is one two three four five six seven there's eight different ancient ones actually i just found some more fucking characters so there is actually 16 characters and eight different ancient ones right whilst there's not that much variety in the encounters these things are going to give you a different placed headache in your brain every time you play this game and that is welcome so the next thing that we like about this game is the sliders work really well this is something that was omitted in the sequel to this eldritch horror right each character just had a set number of abilities that you could get plus and minus tokens but i actually quite like the fact that you can use the sliders to sort of plan against the random nature of the game for instance we played this the other day and a gate appeared in the woods a monster appeared there
there. It was a pretty tough monster, so we used the sliders to plan ahead to increase our speed so we could get down there pretty quick and stop off on the way, pick up some equipment, right? And then we changed it to up our fight value so that we gave ourselves the best chance of defeating it, right? This is something that couldn't really do in Eldritch Horror, and it's just a shame that it was omitted because it is at least some form of mitigation against the random nature of the game, right? So what don't we like about Arkham Horror 2nd Edition? So the first thing that we don't like about it is it's disjointed and it is unfair, right? When we played this the other day, we first started out and we drew a monster from the Monster Cup and it was one of the hardest monsters to defeat. It ripped up your sanity, it had a toughness of three and it had a special ability that basically ripped your cock off and shoved it up your ass. So just to demonstrate, I'm going to reach into my Monster Cup now and we'll see what we get, right? We've got the undead, right? Okay, that's not a particularly good example, but that just demonstrates how unfair and uneven the game is on one occasion you could draw out the equivalent of a marauding terrorist and on the other you could pull out the equivalent of a rabid labradoodle so the second thing that we don't like about arkham horror second edition is that the rules are still too fiddly after all this time i played this way back when in about 2012 but i remember back in 2012 thinking my god these rules are just sort of gonna give me an aneurysm whilst things have progressed to the point where i don't think that anymore still found myself of struggling to absorb all the little itty bitty rules about flying monsters, the different restrictions on monsters on the board, remembering to take monsters out of the overflow bit on the board, right, and put them on the board. I kept forgetting to do that. When I was rereading the rules on paper, it didn't look that complicated, but in practice, it is a real pain in the ass just to try and remember all the bits. And you do need a cheat sheet, but even then, that's not enough. So just go down your local chemist, get a box of Nurofen, and don't eat more, but maybe have one or two. So the third and the final thing that we don't like about Arkham Horror 2nd Edition is there's not enough content in the core box, right? I'm not talking about the investigators or the monsters or the ancient ones because that is bountiful. What I'm talking about is the location encounter cards. There's seven or maybe nine. I can't remember the exact number, but there's not that many of them. And on each card, there's three different locations, but you're going to burn through these quite a bit. And where you'll be shuffling these cards back into the deck, it might be the case that you might have the same encounter one two three maybe even four times during a game right the main problem i got with this is that there's not enough content in the core box but then this game got accused of being a bloke fest when the last expansion was released there was eight expansions released for this and sadly you can't get any of them anymore unless you're going to pay through the nose or sell your kidney on the black market because even the most common expansions go for about 200 quid right so you can write that off if you're going to buy this now you're going to be stuck with a core set and really you're going to burn through a lot of these encounters pretty quickly and that is a little bit disappointing because i want more so to summarize is arkham horror second edition still worth your time and bother i don't know let's say 17 years after it was first released eh? So we're going to say, yes, I do enjoy a good romp through Arkham City. Look, I haven't played this game for about 10 years, but it was just a good feeling to go back in there and have a nose around, fight a few monsters and get my ass handed to me, right? It's not as complex and epic as I remember. That's probably because it's been superseded and surpassed by games like Gloomhaven, Oathsworn and all those big, massive Kickstarter beasts that tell a more cohesive story and don't rely on random die rolls so much, right? The rule do still feel quite fiddly and unintuitive. The lack of content in the core set is still massively problematic as it was when it was first released, right? But there's something permanently charming and curious about this ancient classic, which means it still endures to this day. If you know what you're going to get when you're going into this, you're going to get a random luck fest with a little bit of mitigation. You're just going to have to pull your pants up, dive in and swim and have a laugh while you're doing it and don't take it too seriously, right? Just don't expect to pick up any of the expansions anytime soon if at all one idea i did have is if fantasy flight could reprint this maybe as a collector's edition or something where they take all of the content stick it in one box and then i don't know chuck it on game found or kickstarter for the people that have stolen loads of money from somebody else or the board gaming drug dealing cartels or something like that that would be a good idea but i don't think it's going to happen because i think they're still invested in the reportedly inferior arkham horror third edition right there you go that is arkham horror second edition remember if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel hit the like button and all that youtube bullshit and we'll see you next tuesday